and welcome back. This is the second video in my IGCSE system series. If you want to check out the first video, which is about important words you should know before going to the IGCSEs, you can find it here on top uh, in the cards section or in the description below. Trust me, this video is going to help you a lot. Today's episode is about the syllabus and this video is mainly in three sections. The first one is what the syllabus is, the second one is the importance of the syllabus, and the third one is how to uh, apply the syllabus in your day-to-day -day IGCSE life. I feel like this is a topic that many students either ignore or just don't know about. So yeah, I feel like it's something that everyone should know about. The timestamps for this video is in the description below if you want to skip or go ahead or see a certain topic. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So the first section is what the syllabus is. The syllabus is basically a document containing all of the contents of a subject. And um, the IGCSE syllabus, to be exact, has a lot of information about the subject itself. Um, so it has all the topics that you're going to take in that year for the subject and um, it also has the structure of the exam in there so it tells you how many papers you have to take for the subject and how many hours is each paper and what exactly is in every paper and the structure of every paper so you see how detailed it is. And the third thing that you might find in the syllabus is the requirements for taking that subject. So, for example, for taking IGCSE math, you need to know prior uh, knowledge about math, you know, taken in previous years, and so on. Why is the syllabus made? You know, you got me interested. Why, why is the syllabus there? Uh, so basically, the syllabus has two main purposes. The first one is to help students uh, pick a suitable subject for them to take in the IGCSEs since the syllabus is basically the whole content of that uh, subject. So it's very easy to read the syllabus and see which subject you feel like you are more interested in or you feel like is going to be easier for you. Um, the second reason is to act as a guide for students. So. It basically tells you everything about the subject, from the topics to the exam, um, acting as if it's a checklist. But how do I find that syllabus? You know, now I want to check it out. How can I find it? Well, an easy way is to put your subject's code in the search bar and then write your subject's name. And you'll most probably find uh, the syllabus at the top link or you can go to your subject's university website and write your subject's name and then you'll most probably find it there. Like Now that we're done with the first section, the second section is the importance of the syllabus. Like, you've explained to us all about the syllabus, now why do I need to read the syllabus? But Usually when students get to pick their IGCSE subjects, some schools let students pick from only a very small list of subjects, but some schools let their students pick any IGCSE subject that they like. When you only get to pick from a very small list of subjects to take, um, then you pick the subjects you feel like are more easier to you. So you'll pick biology because you like biology, you pick chemistry because you feel like it's easier than physics, and so on. The problem with the method of letting students pick from a very small list of uh, subjects is that students don't need to read the syllabus to pick from a small list. And here's where the problem comes. They rely on the book as their main source of guidance for that subject. The syllabus contains everything about the subject that you need to know to take the exam for the subject. So the syllabus should always be your guide. If you take books as your guide, some books may miss some very small details. When I first read my chemistry book in the first lesson, there was nothing wrong, right? I was reading the first lesson, everything was okay. And then our teacher's notes came in uh, because our teachers do notes for us. Um, and I found that, I found out that there was a topic in the teacher's notes that wasn't mentioned in the book at all. So I was pretty confused. I was like, why would the teacher give us something from outside our book if 
you know, all we need to know is the book itself. I found out then about the syllabus and that everything that's written in the syllabus is what comes in the exam. And once I read my chemistry syllabus, I found out that the topic that was written in our teacher's notes was there in the syllabus, but it wasn't in the book. So I was pretty shocked, to say the least. If our teacher didn't do chemistry notes for us, then I'll most probably never know. If you ever take a topic in school for any subject, the first thing you need to do is to go and find that topic in the syllabus. Once you find it, read what's underneath the topic because that's what tell that's what tells you um, what in the topic you need to know. And if you find anything written in the syllabus that was never mentioned in the book, something is missing. Okay, but how do I fill in my information about that topic if it's not mentioned in the book? Well, you can always go to online resources because you have a lot of them. Go through a lot of them. Read a lot. Um, since you can't really rely on one resource. Read from a lot of resources online for notes. Uh, watch YouTube videos and you should be filled in on that topic. Your teacher also has to explain that topic because it will come in the exam. So the last topic is how to apply the syllabus to your day-to-day -day life. Uh, we have discovered so far that you shouldn't rely on the book as your guide and that you should always rely on the syllabus as your guide. So here's what I did to, to relate the syllabus with the book. The last thing I want to talk about is the relationship between the syllabus and classified papers. Some classified papers are arranged in the order of topics in the book, but some of them are arranged in the order of the syllabus. And that's one more reason you should always read your syllabus, because you might be confused if you looked at a classified paper and you see like weird topics that are not mentioned in the book, and they're like in a different sequence and all. Uh, you should always know that most classified papers are written in the form of the syllabus. So if your classified papers are ordered in the order of the syllabus, then you can use the table that is made by you to find out which topics to practice in the classified for which, for which lesson in your book. Thank you so much for watching this video. I, I hope it helped you in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah. See you next episode. Goodbye.